I grew up in Ann Arbor, and uh, when I first got my license, my driver's license, uh, it was a snowstorm, and I just loved it, and I still do. I learned to drive in the snow. There are techniques for keeping yourself safe. We got a snowstorm going, and I'm going to go drive around so you won't be afraid to drive in the snow if you don't know how. First of all, the first thing you should do is get used to it. A lot of Michiganders have trouble and slide off the road and need a tow truck when uh, the first snowstorm hits because if they're out of practice from driving all winter in the snow uh, from the previous year. Listen to that sound. Don't be afraid because there's snow on the ground. One of the things I like to do is test. Jam on the brakes and see what happens. And what happens is we've still got uh, and the, the ability to stop that muffled sound I love. It's a snowstorm is beautiful because it changes the sound of everything. Let me turn on the wipers. I'm shooting this with one hand. Come on, come on wipers, there you go. It changes all these sounds. It, uh, it muffles every sound. And added to that is the snow in the air, and the sound is a vibration transferred through the air. That's why I can't hear in uh, space. There's no air. Okay, here we go. We're stopping and then we're starting. You get going slow. Look at this. Uh, the sand or the, uh, the dirt on the roads before the snowstorm or the salt they might have put down mixes with the snow and it reminds me of brown sugar. You just go slow, and you know that stopping and starting take longer. You see I just slipped, so that means there's ice forming underneath the snow. And so I'm just counter steering. If the back wheels go one direction, you turn in that direction with the steering wheel. That's how you counter steer. Okay, we're coming around and we're going real slow around curves. We're doing that because you don't want to fishtail out. This is a salt truck. You want to stay away from them. See the salt truck coming? The reason that you want to stay away from them is they're throwing salt and they're plowing snow. You don't want to go fast when the roads are snow covered. And one of the ways people slip off the road at the beginning of the snow season is they forget to slow down. The other thing is there's not much traffic. It's a Sunday around 9.30 in the morning. And uh, a thing like that would that would keep people out on the roads on a Sunday morning, of course, would be they want to attend church. And that means that uh, the snowstorm is a good excuse to stay in bed and miss church. Especially, we're supposed to get 10 inches of snow total. And that's a lot for Ann Arbor. That's a good, good uh, walloping of snow. This will be the first snowstorm of the year. I think we've had an inch or two on the ground before, maybe in November and early December. But we're uh, around mid-December now, and this would be making me happy when I was a kid, because a white Christmas is something that I always dreamed of. I always felt it helped the mood. We got joggers, all right, and we got a really slick road, and the safest thing to do is slow way down. That's what we're doing. The folk of the north are hardy, and that's why they're out jogging. It's amazing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you can get used to anything. You can get used to some snow, and you can get used to some cold, and you can get used to my hair and beard, okay? I'm still getting used to it. It's hard to keep my hair out of my eyes. I'm getting a little momentum going, picking up speed, because I want to get up this hill. But this is a dangerous time. You don't see the double yellow line. And so everybody should slow down. Also, if someone slides into your lane, they can't obey the double yellow line. Which means do not cross because it puts you in a situation where you could have a head-on collision, which is the most dangerous kind of collision there is. So, we're slowing down. Right, look, it's 35 mile an hour speed limit. I'm going 20. And I have a stick shift here. And I'm in third gear. They'll tell you to stay off the roads, and they're right. 
if you don't know what you're doing, and if you don't have to go somewhere. I'm going over to my parents' house to check on them. Well, I checked on them by phone. They're uh, getting a little older, and these things, uh, it's hard to get the story straight. So I'm just going to go there and be with them a while. Make sure that they're happy and safe, and they have everything they need. A snowstorm is a neat time. It's a fun time because it's a, all the rules change and it changes for everybody. The salt truck drivers have their long shifts. And, uh, the pizza stores are suddenly very busy because people don't want to go out. What are we going to have for dinner? Well, let's order pizza. So that's exciting. In fact, I used to deliver for Domino's during the, uh, uh, my days in college. It was really fun because the snowstorm meant we were going to be really busy, which meant a lot of tips. It also meant we got to drive around in the snow, which you get really good at. You practice anything and you get good at it. And if you're intimidated by a little snowstorm uh, and you want to learn to drive in it, go to a parking lot before the snow gets deep uh, where there's no cars around and turn a couple of donuts. Um, just learn how the, the car gets moving and how it stops and how that's different from when you have dry pavement or uh, no snow on the ground. What you're also going to be looking for and where it can happen is you hit a patch of ice. For whatever reason there might be ice under the snow. That will slide you right off the road. You have no control when you hit a patch of ice unless you have uh, special snow tires, which I don't. I also have a uh, Manual transmission. manual transmission means I have to shift so I have both feet engaged all the time I got three pedals and two feet so I got to play heads up ball that's what I'm doing now I'm going 22 and 30 mile an hour and everybody else has slowed down too because they're sensible That might be why the other reason they might slow down is because it's so beautiful. I love snow. I do. And I like to ski and snowboard. So I don't think of snow as this terrible, awful thing. Even in March, when it can snow in this part of Michigan. And you're kind of chomping at the bit to have spring up here because it's been a long, long winter. Oh, I still love it. I still love it. Uh, if you live in a place that rarely sees snow, which I did, I lived in Delaware for a while, right outside of Philadelphia, and it was, it, to us, who were born and raised in the snow, it's kind of comical. An inch of snow will shut them down, and they'll, you know, everybody will slide off the road and crash their cars into other cars they just have no concept of how to deal with it because they have no chance to practice and they have uh, very little experience or skill and nobody coaches them like for instance people think okay I got four-wheel drive I'll be fine in the snow and they drive normally well yes four-wheel drive is great for deep snow but it's no good on ice it doesn't do anything more for you and also uh, lets you get going in the snow but it doesn't help you stop and so people are deceived by the idea that four-wheel drive is great for the snow, just drive how you want to. No, that isn't true. Things that people do that have uh, two-wheel drive on uh, pickup trucks around here is the first snowfall. If they're not using the bed of their pickup truck, they'll fill it with snow. And that way they've got much more weight in the back, on those back wheels, which are the drive wheels. It's pretty clever and it's easy uh, at the end of the snow season to just let it all melt out of there. It's just a beautiful thing. That, that muffled sound. That beautiful snowfall. Love it, love it. And there's always some guy that wants to go faster. And here he comes. Hope he doesn't slide into me when he fishtails. Down the hill. Right. 
you got to watch for ice on a bridge because there's cold air underneath the bridge. And so when it goes below freezing, uh, the bridge can be icier than the, um, the surrounding roads. And in Michigan, we have signs right before every bridge that says, Bridge is ice before roadways. So, also, the salt trucks concentrate on getting a lot of salt on the bridges to keep it from icing up like that. When I was in high school, I had a friend whose father was killed. Uh, he's, he was driving, and it was early in the snow season, and there was ice on the bridge. It wasn't far from here, actually. And he, some truck jackknifed in front of him, and he tried to jam on the brakes, and he couldn't stop, and he went right into the back of it. We were all so sad. That was a, like our first wake-up call that people can die, not just in car accidents. People could die. When you're that young, you really haven't uh, had any, hopefully you haven't had an experience like that where it's just driven home that life is finite. It's a good experience to have, though, not for my friend's father, but... But to understand that you're not going to live forever, and you better enjoy it, and a snowstorm is very enjoyable, isn't it? This is Huron Parkway in Ann Arbor. The, the clever way they designed this is to bank the curves the wrong way. So instead of coming around the curve and going, uh, having the G-forces mitigated by the slant in the road, the road doesn't slant. So you get extra G-forces, which means it's uncomfortable to go fast. So there's not much speeding on here on Parkway because they've uh, incentivized it with the engineering to make sure that uh, the curves are pretty much banked the wrong way or not banked at all like this one. So you have to go slow. Look at that beautiful golf course. Golf courses are always beautiful. You got the green in the summer. You got the colors in the fall. You got the snow in the winter. Although I don't golf much. Here's another tip. Uh, if you've got snow on the outside of your car, it's going to give you this frost. Well, it's not frost now. It's, uh, you need to use the defroster. And the way to do that is not to crank it to the hottest setting and then crank it to the hottest fan setting. It's to modify. So I put it in the middle setting for temperature and the middle setting for air circulation. And so I'm not blasting out hot air and making myself uncomfortable, but I am getting a lot of air circulation to minimize the um, fog on the inside of the car. And that's something that you usually need to do in a snowstorm. That's what I've done. There goes a private snowplow company. Big business. People need their business parking lots and their home, long driveways. They need them plowed. And so people uh, where they live in the snow belt like we do um, pay for that. They get the contract set up beforehand, before the snow starts. Just like you would have your lawn cut, lawn service. There are snow plow services. And they, a lot of uh, their profitability depends on the snow, and if we don't get snow very much for a season, uh, it's hard on them because all that extra money they make and all the extra work they put in and the hours, um, they don't get that if it doesn't snow. So it's a happy occasion for a lot of people financially. And when we were kids, we used to go from door to door in a big snowstorm and knock on the door with our snow shovels. We do it in teams because it was a big deal for us to approach a stranger and ask if we could shovel their walkway. And you know, we would never say, we'll do this for 20 bucks or 5 bucks or whatever. Uh, we would never set the price. We'd just let them determine that. And uh, one time, I was shoveling this lady's walk and she was very particular about how she wanted it and I got it all done. And she said, I don't have any cash. I'm going to pay you with a check. And I said, all right. And she wrote me a check for 75 cents. <laughs> it was amazing. And uh, I was talking to my friend about it. 
I said, I can't believe that. I hold up the check, 75 cents? I can't believe that. And he goes, I'd have told her no dice, bitch. <laughs> but I was an altar boy at the time, so I didn't do that. One of the things that'll happen if you drive for a while in uh, heavy snow is that uh, they get you get ice and snow stuck to the wipers. If you're at a stoplight and you can pull this off, you wait till the wiper comes up and you flick it like that. See, it knocked all that off, and now you'll see the difference between one wiper and the other. Let me speed it up. Nope, it's not all the way knocked off. not perfect but it's better and I've got the defroster going and sometimes that helps and sometimes you can turn up the heat when this problem develops if you don't want to stop and pull over and get rid of that ice it's a pain but this is the other way to do it you just get out stop later a parking lot and you thunk that off of there see that it's got to come off and sometimes it's frozen on there and it's a pain the other thing is sometimes you've got to get all this snow out of the way. How beautiful! I'll let it snow for a while while I visit my parents and then we'll go turn some donuts in a parking lot. So to get good at driving in the snow you find a parking lot and do some donuts. Now look at this fellow over here. One of the things you can do, and people do this a lot, say he's got to go into work at the bowling alley. So he's lifted up his wipers so that they're not going to freeze to the windshield. Let me zoom in on that for you. This is a very common way to deal with ice and snow. See how the wipers are up there? That's so that he can scrape his windshield without the wipers frozen in the way. Smart. Look, this guy's doing it too. I love a good snowstorm. I like to get it off the hood and off the headlights, but let the wipers do the rest. 
Doesn't have to be perfect. You see how hard the snow is coming down. If this was rain, we'd be in a heavy rain. Also, I like to get the handles free of snow. And here's what I like to do when I'm getting in, is not track all the snow in. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. I'm gonna turn up the heat. And I'm gonna turn up the defrost. And I'm gonna wear my seat belt. That's the law. It's also safe. When I was a kid, nobody wore seat belts. There was no law that says you had to. People were really incensed when suddenly there was a law that you had to. But it saved countless lives since then. So it's just a good idea. Also, they made the seat belts more comfortable. All that stuff. You ought to look at my video. I'll post a link right there about how things have changed since I was a kid. And they certainly have a ton of, ton of better things. Ho, 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 we're driving in the snow. This car has front wheel drive and it's a manual transmission. Both those things make it, give it much more traction. The front wheel drive has the weight of the engine over the drive wheels. So it kind of comes up front. And when I let off the gas, there's a pretty immediate reaction. More traction, more torque. Earlier I was doing donuts in the snow at the parking lot of the bowling alley, but I couldn't. I looked at the footage and I really couldn't get it flipping around crazy donuts like I could do in my dad's Pinto. Well, look, we got the cross-country skiers out recreating. Have fun while the snow falls. That's my motto and theirs too. It's been snowing a long time. Here's St. Francis School. And the guy who has a contract to plow their parking lot. That's what's happening now. I'm going to go out onto US 23 on the way home to where I live on North Campus so that uh, you can see what the highways look like in Michigan during a snowstorm. And this is a snowstorm. Not really so unusual. But it is the first one of the season, and it is quite a quite an event. People stay home, they stay off the roads, which they should be doing. And it'll make the newspaper, and everybody talks about the weather. They'll be talking about this. Oh, this is a no turn on red, so it can't turn until the light turns. This building here, Dream Maker Bath and Kitchens, they're thriving. But when I was 16 years old, I got a job as a dishwasher there. It was called Tricky Dick's Frontier Beef Buffet. And uh, it was a fun place to work. For my second job, my first job was delivering the Ann Arbor News, which got delivered after school. And then it got delivered on Sunday morning. And I always had money to go to the movies and treat my friends. It was a fun, fun job, especially around Christmas time, because everybody would give you your annual Christmas tip as a newsboy. I remember having a wallet stuffed with dollar bills back then. Fun times. Once you get used to driving in the snow, it's not stressful. You're primarily looking out for other drivers. You don't want them sliding into you or because of poor visibility, uh, driving into your lane when you're not expecting it. Everybody slows way down, as you can see, except for the odd guy, that one guy. Slow down, one guy. That happens. 
and they're usually the ones that slide off the road. And they tell the tow truck driver, I don't know what happened, I got four wheel drive. Yeah, well that doesn't work for braking, pal. Nothing puts me in the crisp spirit more than a good snowfall. got to get over in about half a mile and I can't because traffic is pacing me on the other lane so I've got to speed up to make my opening to make a lane change which I will signal for. I'm good to go. When you're going up a hill and you're leaving the ruts this is a dangerous time. It's a time you can really lose control and slip and go flying into a telephone. As long as you know when things can go wrong, you can put yourself on high alert. And then go back to relaxing. What a disparity. I've got 29 degrees on my instrument panel. Arbor Land sign says 23. When we go to my grandma's house near Detroit when we were little kids, as we were coming back, we would get off at this exit for Ann Arbor. And we'd see that Arborland sign, and my little sister Amy would say, I discovered Arborland! Like she was uh, Magellan or uh, Christopher Columbus. It was always fun. I look back at the footage of when we were growing up, when we were kids, and we were all such happy kids. It was so nice to have such a wonderful childhood. And part of that, just playing in the snow and sledding and having snowball fights. We used to used to dig tunnels or snow forts, like caves in the big piles of snow. A snow day is just the funnest thing for a kid. And we would play outside. There was no uh, nothing good on TV in the weekday daytime because there were only three channels and there was nothing for kids. It was all as the world turns and. Uh, the soap operas and stuff, or news at noon. Nothing we were interested in. We would go outside with our snow pants on and our jackets and our mittens and play all day. Come in soaked, freezing, and get some hot chocolate. Mom would cook on the stove in a big pan. She'd take quick. We never had marshmallows in it. That would have been too uh, extravagant. I'm going to slow down. I'm going about 30 miles an hour in a 70, and that's enough for me. I can see that there's a glaze of ice underneath the snow, which makes it dangerous. Got a big semi behind me, and I'm hoping he doesn't decide that he's got to go faster than me and pass. That would be dangerous. But sometimes you can't help what other people are going to do and when they're going to do it. And uh, the most dangerous point for him to pass me would be when we get to this bridge here and so there's no out for any of us if he starts to jackknife or I start to lose control like this bozo right there it happens and it happens because this glaze of ice underneath the snow it's just like when you're skiing if there's ice underneath the snow between the mobiles it's, you can easily lose control and go sideways and people do especially in the first snowstorm of the season so we're going to be very careful. I'm going about 38 miles an hour. Now. And good, I'm, I'm leaving that semi back there. So we've got freedom all around me from all directions. No other cars giving me a dangerous situation. I like that. always want to do is, if you can, if there are ruts, these tire tracks, stay in them, those, stay in the ruts, do not cross out of them and go driving when you're not in the ruts. Also when you're approaching a bridge, as I said, that's where the most dangerous ice can be. So, I mean, 
very careful not to push hard on the gas and suddenly try to accelerate. That'll make your wheels slip and when they do, you can go sideways. And when you go sideways, you can't steer. You can't control where the car is going and you've lost control. Even for a second, it is scary. So you got to get used to that. And one of the reasons to practice in a parking lot, letting yourself in a safe place uh, lose control for a second or two, is really helpful because you, you can learn to feel when you're going to get control back. And it's not a panic situation because you've had it happen before in a safe way. Now here comes a guy with four-wheel drive, so he's got to go 60 or whatever. Here we go, we're getting past. Cross your fingers, he doesn't lose control. There we go, there we go. And this is the other thing, i got to let people merge, and that means this guy over here. So I'm going to drop my speed and drive defensively as possible. i got my headlights on, of course. Wave it to him, come on in, I'm letting you in. Once I got passed by a truck like that, in a situation like this, in the mountains of West Virginia, he was going, going, going strong, and we came over a mountain, me and the kids, and there he was. He had slipped off into the median like this guy. And then, 20 minutes later, here he came again, passing us at the same speed. So he must have been able to get out after he slipped off. They were taking their floor mats out and putting them underneath their wheels so that they could get some traction and get out of that medium. That's what the people were doing back there. So, this is what happens in a snowstorm. A lot of people don't drive in it well until they get the message that you got to slow down and be very careful. And then, once they get out of that situation, they still might not have learned. felt the ice. We just went over a patch of ice and I went slightly sideways for a microsecond. You really get tuned into it, what it feels like when the car doesn't go where the wheels usually do in the manner that they do when you have traction. See the tracks? Somebody went off into the median and they slid off the road. That was a while ago because they're full of snow. It's been snowing all day. I'd say we have six inches on the ground now. It's supposed to get more, but they almost like to, the weathermen like to pad the estimate. Oh, yeah, 10 inches, maybe more. And then you get four. That's what happens most of the time because they don't want to be accused of not warning people. And they'll tell you, stay off the roads. Uh, this is a time when you wouldn't make a trip for no reason. I wanted to have, help my dad get his meds from the pharmacy rather than have him to do this driving. So I made the trip. Otherwise, I would have stayed home and edited videos for my YouTube channel. So like and share this video. I want my channel to grow because we can have a lot of fun in the comment section. And you might have never driven in the snow. And I hope that I've given you some tips on how to do that. Because it is a skill that you learn with practice. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm taking this exit. And of course, it's going to be a different depth of snow because fewer people have driven on this road. I'm using my signal to be safe. Michigan, if, you, if you're not from Michigan, has these very long exit ramps and clover leaves. And it's kind of nice. You've got plenty of time to adjust, especially when it's, it's been snowing. We're by Domino Farms. It's 
there somewhere but behind the woods. Ann Arbor is a beautiful town. Got a shift. Sometimes you have to start slowly. Also, when you come to a red light um, and then it turns green, what you really need to do in the snow is make sure that everybody that's supposed to stop is able to stop before you enter that intersection. You don't want to get T-boned. And so what if it's the other guy's fault? You're the one that gets crashed into. So that's and on my bicycle I follow the same principle. I don't care who has the right of way or the legal right to do this or that or who would get in trouble if there was an accident. The person in trouble, the person injured, if it's you, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. Okay. So you drive super defensively, forgetting look at this guy. He's got the traction. Okay, good. I thought it might slide into in front of us. And then if we lost traction, trying to stop suddenly, there would be a fender bender, which is very common in a situation like this. The snow plow. They'll run continuously until everything's under control again. So if there's a three-day storm, they just keep working. They must get mega overtime. And they must pound a lot of coffee. When snow covers the pavement markings, everybody sort of goes by where the ruts are, where the tires are. Okay, that's my lane and that's the other lane. So even though you don't see the white and yellow marks, people cooperate. Which is a beautiful thing. It's surprising how much cooperation is. Uh, this goes on as a natural part of our society. And then the news is all focused on the road rage every now and then, which is an aberration, not the normal. And it's a beautiful thing. For beauty in any situation, and you will find it. And then you'll find more of it, and more of it, and more of it. And that's how it goes. And that's what life is. Exactly what you make it. So look for beauty, and it will be beautiful. See how easy it is once you learn how to adjust your driving to drive in the snow. I've adjusted my speed so that I'm going much slower than I ordinarily would and everybody else is too or they've already slid off the road and learned that lesson or not, who knows. But you can see that driving this way with front wheel drive or four wheel drive, it could get much, much deeper before you couldn't drive in. So, so you don't have to be intimidated by a snowstorm. Go to a parking lot and practice in the snow and you'll learn it. Key point though is to just slow down. Is increase your stopping distance because you don't know if there's ice underneath the snow that's gonna um, when you press the brakes all of a sudden you don't have traction and you slide into the car in front of you or worse into the intersection and then you get t-boned by another car that can't stop it's uh, you've got to nurse it when you put on the brakes you put them on slow so you anticipate when you have to stop don't make a bunch of sudden movements with the brake or with the accelerator. Another time that you need to really be careful in the snow is when you get to a big hill, either going up that hill or coming down. Think about it when you ride your bicycle and you come to a big hill. There's a lot more effort to go up that hill required. So you're pumping uh, your legs and you're getting going and you're pushing up that hill and it's, it's a lot of effort. 
because you're fighting against gravity. And so in a car, you need more traction going uphill. And so that means that if you hit a patch of ice, your wheels can slip out from underneath you and you lose control. So uphill is a danger, more so than flat. And downhill is a danger because of the difficulty in stopping because gravity is pulling you down that hill. That's what sledding is. You get on the sled and you start sliding on the snow, letting gravity pull you forward down the hill. So, um, we're coming to a big hill. And what I'm going to be doing is being very careful not to lose control, not to go too fast down the hill and then expect my brakes to work as if there was no, was no hill. And, uh, and then going up the hill, I'm aware that as I try to accelerate, it takes more because you're fighting against gravity. So you need more traction to get going and hold the tire's grip on the road. going to be very careful because we're almost home and we made it without incident. Although we've seen a few incidents of people sliding off the road, having slid off the road. I don't have any footage of anybody actually doing it. I only have the aftermath. It's hard to see with the camera that this is a steep hill that we're going down. And you can see on the other side a steep incline after those railroad tracks. So I can feel it that this car wants to speed up with no effort. And I got some dummy on my tail. And that's the other thing. Ignore bad drivers. If you have control, like he can't pass me now and he can't make me speed up. And I don't want to speed up, that would be dangerous. So if he wants to ride my bumper, which is dangerous, that's his problem. And in Michigan, if you rear-end someone, you get a ticket for failing to stop in the assured, clear distance ahead. That's the law. So. I don't have to react to his tailgating. Now we're going up the hill and we've got a different situation, which is we need more traction and more power to get up the hill. And I'm getting it. You can see how the wipers are now coated with ice. And I would uh, find a place to stop and get that ice off of there. But I'm two minutes from home, so I'm just going to ignore that situation. So I got a tailgater I'm ignoring, and I got iced up windshield wipers I'm ignoring. Which is fine. Another secret to happiness. Learn what to ignore. What can be ignored, do it. Tune it out. That's what I'm doing. Alright, we had a fun drive in the snow. And I hope you learned something. And I'm glad I didn't slide off. That would, that would be a that would be a video that got a lot of hits. Oh yeah, I'll teach you to drive in the snow. Ah! <laughs> now I'll call a tow truck. Thank you for watching. Hit like, subscribe to my channel. There's a lot of fun to be had.